Hello and welcome to this visual analysis example presentation. My name is Terry Kubat and I'm going to walk you through constructing a little three-dimensional plate model today. Here's a sketch of the model we're going to try to create in visual analysis. It's a retaining wall with buttresses or counterforts and this is what it will look like in visual analysis when we're done. We've got the wall, we've got a footing, we've got some reinforcement um, pilasters, and we have some spring supports on the bottom. So I'm going to demonstrate how we get that uh, set up. I also have an area in here for applying a triangular load on this wall, and we'll demonstrate that as well. So let's just start a new project here. Uh, before I do that, though, I just want to mention we do have a a dedicated retaining wall program called Quicker Wall, which does a cantilever wall using traditional methods, but this program does not handle the buttresses or the reinforcements, so that's why we're pulling out the big guns in visual analysis today, uh, is to do something a little bit beyond what Quicker Wall can, can manage for us. So the first thing I'm going to do is sketch in a plate element and I'm just going to use a very crude plate element here to start with um, because I can go in here and I can uh, <clears throat> change the, the dimensions once I get it started. So I'm just going to sketch in a single plate to represent the wall. Now I'm going to rotate this grid 90 degrees about the x-axis to get it in the horizontal plane and I'm going to sketch in here uh, half of my footing on one side and the other half on the other side. And uh, I didn't make those the same width, so I could uh, change that. That's six feet, so I'm going to make these minus six just for some symmetry here. So I have the basic uh, layout of what I want for my uh, wall here. And I've got 24 foot spacing between the pilasters, so I'm going to set, set up the model so I can model um, two pilasters and then uh, half a wall width on either side um, so that I can model something which is essentially really long, but I'm just going to model a section of it. So I've got uh, 48 uh, feet is what I need here, um, so I'm going to move these end nodes out to 48 feet, and I had just had them at 38, so now I've got my model the right length. Now I'm going to split these plates into uh, just 12 foot sections right now. So I'm going to split them 12 uh, parts in X. I need um, four and we'll just do uh, four parts in Y too. That works fine. So now I've got some nodes where I need my um, my buttress supports and I just need to get the grid set up so that I can draw in a plate uh, perpendicular here. So I'm going to rotate this grid again. This time I'm going to ro rotate it 90 degrees about the y-axis and I'm going to locate it at uh, 12 feet. So now we can see I've got my grid located so I can go in here and I can sketch in uh, it's a little tricky to draw in three dimensions here and get it into the right spot. Just want to. So there, I don't need my grid anymore. I can turn that off. So I've got this model set up. If I go to a picture view, you can see it a little bit more clearly, but I've got my uh, one of my buttresses in there, and I'm just going to make a copy of this in the X direction. One copy at 24 feet should get it in the right spot. And there we go. So I've got uh, my wall, and I've got my um, buttresses, and I've got my foundation. 
So now I can do some things like if I go to my cut views here, I can isolate just the, the foundation and I can select all these nodes, or all these plates, I mean. And I can go up here to model and I can generate some compression only springs um, underneath this plate model. So I've got the compression only springs there. I can go back. Um, the other thing I might want to do is select all these nodes. And I'm just going to fix them in the X direction and the Z direction. I don't want this model uh, shifting horizontally anywhere. I'm just going to assume that this foundation is buried in the, in the dirt. There's enough friction uh, to hold it in place. So uh, th there's a lot of engineering decisions that are going into how you set this model up, and I'm not going to touch on that. You have to make uh, your own decisions about how you want these uh, support conditions, what they should look like. Now I'm going to take a look at the wall itself, and because I'm modeling an infinitely long wall, or a very long wall, I'm going to assume that out here at the ends that the structure is really continuing even though I'm not modeling it, and so I'm going to prevent uh, rotation about the vertical axis there. Um, just to provide a little bit of continuity um, for what's not being modeled. And that gets me a long way toward having my model complete. Um, I could set material properties and thicknesses on these, on these various portions if I wanted to and change them up. Um, this is a very crude model and most likely you're going to want to be splitting the plate elements to get a finer mesh in order to get a more accurate model. And when you do that, you're going to need to go in and redefine the spring supports. And I can show you what you might do there is I might um, take all these plate elements and split them again. And I'm going to take them all except these two for the moment and split them again in the x direction. I'm just going to split them twice here uh, just to demonstrate. So now I've split these plate elements again. And when you do this, you have to be careful to make sure that things are connected. And these two plates really aren't connected properly. We've got nodes on their edges. And what I need to do is split these plates uh, into four by four pieces so that they are connected along the length of the wall and connected along the base. Now what I've done, because I've change my model, I've really got to change my support conditions too, and so I'm just going to delete all these springs that I put in there. And again, I'm just demonstrating how you fix these models when you have to do mesh refinement, which you'll really do after you look at results. And I'm just demonstrating some of these modeling techniques. So now that I've got my plate split, I need to regenerate these um, spring supports and so now I've got uh, spring supports in there. And again, I can select all these nodes and make sure they're fixed in the X direction and the Z direction. So there I've fixed up my support conditions. So now I have a maybe more realistic model uh, for doing this. The next thing I want to do is apply some loads. And I want to apply a lateral uh, earth pressure on the retaining wall or a backfill pressure. And in order to do that, I'm going to use an area. An area is nice because it allows me to apply loads that are really separated from the model so that if I do a plate uh, split operation, I don't have to delete my loads and recreate them or, or, or just really worry about those loads. So I'm going to draw in an area here. So I'm going to change it from draw plate to draw area and go in and I'm just going to sketch in one big area, and I'm not going to make it go to the top, I'm just going to make it go um, three-fourths of the way because that's all I want for my load. So now I've got this area in here, if I turn off my plates you can see it a little bit more clearly. I can select that area and um, I can check here the height of this area is nine feet. So what I want is a, a high pressure at the bottom of this and a zero pressure at the top. So when I select this area, I can apply a load. I'm going to make it a linear load varying in the vertical direction. 
and I'm going to leave this at 100 PSF at the bottom and at the top which was 9 feet I'm going to make this uh, zero pressure say OK and there you can see I've got a, a triangular distribution of pressure on that wall and so there it is the complete model and we ought to be able to run an analysis now and get some displacements and we can view those we can go to the filter and get some plate um, bending stresses bending moments or uh, and just see what's going on there in in that wall under these loads and so that's how you do it uh, Just a quick introduction to how you might model something like this in visual analysis. Some little tips and tricks. I uh, appreciate you watching. If you have any questions or comments about this, uh, please email support at isweb.com and we'll be happy to address your issues. Thanks again.